Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Nerding Out with Nick Bodiford. My name is Nick Bodiford. The date is November 21st, 2022. We have the Thanksgiving week slate coming up. Uh, we are a few hours out from Monday night football kickoff of what is that week 11 um we're going to be breaking down the thursday through sunday slates perhaps with a few notes on uh sunday night football uh as well which i guess is part of that slate but um yeah and we'll we'll be looking towards the the waiver wire as well because there are a few there are a few interesting names there are a few old names that we've talked about before on here that are a bit of a heartbreaker um but certain things up with with Thursday night football, uh, Tennessee Titans 27 at Green Bay Packers 17. Not a lot to say on Derrick Henry. Um, high volume workload, inefficient rushing um, some. He's very efficient as a receiver and got one of two for 45 yards. Uh, but <clears throat> two guys of note here for the for the Tennessee Titans overall. Number one is uh, Traylon Burks. Dude has uh, stormed back to he, – he's the number one there. And the raw box score is not necessarily going to tell you that over the last two weeks. Uh, but his target earning ability is, like, just in this in this short span since he's been back from the injury, is elite. It Like, like Traylon Burks might close the season as a top 12 wide receiver kind of elite. Um, it, and it is his yardage production as well right there uh, in, in in good company. I, I think he'll probably settle in as a wide receiver two or maybe a wide receiver three with exciting upside. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think like Burks is, is going to be a, a weekly starter from here on out. Another dude, uh, tight end, fellow rookie, Chigozium Okonkwo. Um, he has not had, I think it's a good time to buy low, especially in dynasty. Um, because Austin Hooper had a big day, but Okonkwo has on his, on his limited, uh, workload throughout the year has just been electric every time he's got the ball and on a, you know, per play per route, what have you efficiency is very, very good. Like extremely good. It, some of that will come down, um, as, as he gets, you know, more touches, but like I actually both of these guys, Burks and Okonkwo, I wrote up over um in the five things we've learned article at the 33rd team. So go check them out because it that's got their per route data and everything there. Um and so I'm I can't you know go into that here, but uh it elite as well. And I like I it's too early to say if he'll be a big time difference maker at you know by the end of this year. But the schedule is really favorable. Uh, they've got multiple matchups against defenses, uh, excuse me, no, offenses. Um, I think they're playing like four of the top 12 scoring offenses over the rest of the regular season, I think five of the top 16. And then the the one that is not one of these explosive elite offenses um, is the Houston Texans. So, you know, defense he can kind of beat up on. Uh, so I like him. And, and you know, tight end, t- tight end comes with the same caveats as always, but – when we're looking for dynamism, we're always looking for dynamism at the at the position, and Okonkwo checks that box, so that's cool. Uh, Robert Woods, I think he's he's just kind of settling into a, a sidekick role, but he's been efficient, good for him. Uh, Nick Westbrook Kinney is he's been good on um, big plays, and I think that that can kind of just be his role in the offense. On the Packers side of things, uh, you know, Rogers, he just keeps keeps playing with his injured thumb and and that <clears throat> that just is what it is it has not slowed Christian Watson who's just on a friggin tear and you should continue starting him every week Lazard um I think he'll probably be a wide receiver three or four I mean we we know what he is at this point and but I, I can't remember what their what their matchup is this week I think it's oh I think it's Philly yeah it is Philly um, I, I would advise you all to go check out their slot rates. And I think that, the, that, yeah, actually by tomorrow, the slot rates should be up, um, on the 33rd team's edge tool, which I know some of the nerd, nerd ball guys like to use, um, the, the Eagles secondary has a big hole in it in, in their slot 
corner uh, coverage because Vontae Maddox is now on injured reserve. So they've got instead uh, Josiah Scott, who's not very good there. I think they 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 did trade for Chauncey Gardner Johnson. CJ, whatever it is, C um, was decent in New Orleans. Not a I'm not don't fear him though. But anyway, the the connection is there with with Rogers. So you know, start start Watson as a, a wide receiver two, and I think start Lazard as like borderline wide receiver three slash four. Um, and then I you know Cobb. <sighs> If you want to chase it, go for it. Uh, I'm not going to. to Robert Tunyon's, uh, uh, you know, dust ball. Um, oh, something to note over with the, the Titans. Dontrell Hilliard does not have the passing game locked down. Hassan Haskins is somewhat of a factor there. Uh, but for the Green Bay running backs, we saw a little life out of A.J. Dillon. That'd be cool if it continues. Still too early to trust him. And Aaron Jones is... Uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be tough sledding against Philadelphia. They did a good job against Jonathan Taylor this week after they signed uh Indomitian Sue and uh who is that other defensive? They signed another defensive tackle. I'm blanking on his name, but uh old old standout guy. Um and I don't actually I have not checked to see if they have if those guys suited up last week, but regardless like um Philly's defense they were getting beat up I guess a little bit by by opposing running backs. Uh, but it's it's a very good defense as a whole. It's well coached. It's not one that I am like I the slot coverage thing. I think that you can target, but as a whole, you know, we shouldn't be like, <laughs> yeah, start them because they they lost two of their defensive tackles. Um, so Hargrave, Sweat, let's see, oh Linval Joseph, that's who they signed, and he did play, and so did Dominican Sue. So yeah, I mean, I think they've they've kind of plugged those holes, and uh, it, it'll be. Tough sledding for the Green Bay backfield. Chicago Bears 27 at Atlanta Falcons. Just brutal friggin' injuries here. So Justin Fields was carted off at the end of the game with a left shoulder injury. He is right-handed. Um, getting some some breaking news. Oh, I guess that's not breaking, but Mike Williams re-aggravated his ankle injury. Yeah, I did think I think we knew that was the case. But then um Anthony Barr, Dallas Cowboys linebacker, uh strained his hamstring. So he's probably not going to play against the giants. All right. So that'll be interesting for, uh, uh, um, rankings tinkering, but, uh, just feels so here at his left shoulder. It's a big bummer because the dude takes contact when he runs and uh, he did really well. And he'll, I, I bet he'll probably play because it's not his throwing shoulder, but like that kind of an injury might impact, uh, fields more than others. Just, I mean, I don't know. Like, he'll have to be on his slide game. How about that? I I bet he'll play, and I I think that you should probably still start him as a uh top five or six quarterback one. Items the quarterback one last week, and I think that was that was smart. Um, but you know, just m- we'll monitor it. Something it's something to take note of. Uh, this was a, f- a fun thing to write up though. You know, I was high on Fields uh over at PFF, and we talked about that on the live stream. It was it was really cool to see because the Falcons are bad in in the intermediate passing game, and so I you know I figured Mooney would be able to take advantage of that, and he did. He didn't have as prolific of a game, four of five for twenty nine and and one touchdown. Uh, but I also thought Equinemia St. Brown might be able to grab uh, a couple chunk gains, and he he went two of two for twenty four, which is not gaudy, but it's like all right, the process was right. It hit that sick Chase Claypool. He had uh, eleven yards on two two receptions. I I don't think we're going to see a whole lot out of chase Claypool for the rest of the year. I think you can probably drop him um, if you were stashing him, but you know, whatever stash plays or stash plays Cole Komet. Uh, the, the overall production came down a little bit, still did a good job of earning targets and was relatively uh, efficient with them. Three of four for 35 yards. I'm still starting to, uh, Cole Komet as a, a tight end one David Montgomery. Um, he yeah okay so yeah Montgomery, uh, Darrington Evans and Tristan Ebner they factored in on passing downs a little bit but Dave Montgomery did dominate those looks so he is he's locked in as the the Bears dual threat lead back he's it's not much of a timeshare it's you know like he he's got like a ninety percent snap share on on pass downs kind of thing so um, he'll keep running it efficiently and uh, and picking up some PPR points for us we'll take that he's a running back too. On the Atlanta side of things, Marcus Mariota, he he carried the ball a little bit more frequently. I think he ran the ball 
13 times, 20 some yards and a touchdown. I bet he runs more with Kyle Pitts out for the year or out indefinitely MCL sprain. So MCL sprain, they, they come in all shapes and sizes. Um, I'm getting more uh, chargers alerts here, but I'm pulling up the, um, the injury data uh, for, for MCLs. So again, as you guys know, this is from Adam Hutchison. So, so tight ends average 3.8 games missed due to uh, MCL sprains. They, man, this is brutal. In their first game back, they average a 54% dip in fantasy production. So even when Kyle Pitts comes back, it'd be really hard to trust him, especially if he comes back. I mean, well, okay, I'm not going to go there, but it's, that's brutal. Uh, over the first three weeks back, he, they average a 16.8% dip in fantasy production. That is still something you probably want to start pits for just because he's an elite target earner and, and yardage producer. Like he's, he's off the charts. Uh, it's just a, a really rough situation. Um, Oh, linebacker, Kenneth Murray, surface stinger. Um, yeah, I, I, you can probably drop pits, but like, if you're a winning team and you have bench space, I would add him. I don't because he. I think he. I think he's going to have. So the the first doctor said that he was going to have to have surgery. He was going to get a second opinion on it. So it probably means that he had like a grade two, um, MCL tear, which is similar to I think what Miles Gaskin suffered two or three years ago. It's not what it's I. Oh, 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 I actually, I think it would be the same as what, uh, what Elijah Mitchell's Mitchell suffered earlier this year. Cause Mitchell, I was thinking Mitchell had an ACL grade two, but it was, I think it was an MCL grade two. Um, yeah, he, he could come back this year. Kyle Pitts good. And if you're a winning team, you should add him, but it's, you know, am, am I, he, he might just get you a whole lot of nothing. Um, as for what this means for the rest of the team though, I think Drake London, he'll see, I mean, he was already an elite NFL target earner. The volume, I know, was whatever, whatever, but I would be buying Drake London if you can. Uh, Demir Bird seems to be the the true field stretcher here, although Alameda Zacchaeus and Kaderil Hodge are getting in the mix. Um, I, I think that, that Bird maybe is worth an add in like 16 team leagues, but I would probably be difficult to trust him outside of that. As for the running backs, uh, Cordero Patterson, you know, he set that um, return record. He was moderate. He was actually, he was pretty successful on the ground. He got going a little bit in the passing game, but Algier is playing on uh, passing downs pretty significantly and still running well. So it's a split backfield. Uh, I was heartened, not for him, but I was heartened to see Caleb Huntley have his workload scaled back. So like what we want here is just two good rushers in Cordell Patterson and Tyler Algier last week was a step in that direction. Then we've got, uh, Carolina Panthers at Baltimore Ravens. That was Carolina three, Baltimore Ravens 13. And that last one, Chicago won 27-24. But Carolina Panthers three, Baltimore Ravens 13. Uh, Yeah, this is one that Ian Harditz pointed out on our show on Friday. Um, The game script was going to be a problem for the uh, Carolina backfield. Interestingly, Raheem Blackshear seems to have maybe kind of like challenged chuba for the passing down role so we need to keep an eye on that i thought he ran really well in the preseason and i it's speculative ads but you maybe could add uh black shear uh dante foreman he was just game scripted out of this one and it's it's too dang bad there will be some good matchups especially in crunch time but they, you know they have an unfortunate buy um there's nothing to say about the passing game it's dead with baker mayfield at the helm if pj walker starts then you can start DJ Moore uh, as a wide receiver two, probably maybe three. And then Terrace Marshall as a wide receiver six. Um, For Baltimore, Lamar had a, a pretty standard Lamar Jackson day. I was really disappointed in Kenyon Drake, just totally flopping. Uh, Lamar, you know, he, he had, I think a, a, a multi-touchdown, uh performance i'll pull this up I, the process here was that carolina they're 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 very friendly to opposing um run games and 
Kenya Drake, he had been dominating passing down work and then Justice Hill just came in and, and kind of sapped that from him. And it unfortunately, he didn't do a whole lot, but he caught three of three for eight yards. That's 3.8 points in PPR scoring that could have gone to Drake, which is significant. Uh, Lamar, he carried the ball 11 times for 31 yards and a touchdown. You know, if those goal line looks, uh, actually, I don't remember where he scored from, but you know, it, it's just, it's, I think that the cards just fell in an unfortunate manner for Kenyon Drake this week. I, I still moderately like him as just a, um, a volume guy if Gus Edwards is out, but this definitely shoots a hole in the hull of his ship. And I think that if Gus Edwards is able to return that I, after this showing, I'm probably leaning Gus Edwards as the RB one there. Um, Passing game. We called out Mar- Demarcus Robinson a couple of weeks ago as the Rashad Bateman replacement, and he thunderously asserted himself as such, catching nine of nine for 128 yards. Um, I believe I put Robinson in the five things we learned piece. So go take a look at that at the 33rd team. But his per route production was just insane, and it's been really good. Um, since week eight, since early in, in uh, when Bateman left. So I would go add to Marcus Robinson. I think Robinson is a wide receiver three moving forward. Uh, Mark Andrews is Mark Andrews. Isaiah likely did a decent job earning targets, but couldn't, you know, get the job done here. Duvernay matchup dependent at this point, very, very matchup dependent. He's he, Demarcus Robinson is ahead of him. He is operating as the number two behind Mark Andrews. Cleveland Browns 23 at Baltimore, or excuse me, at Buffalo Bills 31. Jacoby Brissett crushed it. Um, 324 passing yards, three touchdowns, seven carries for 29 yards. Our, all the uh, injury reports are coming in now, so we're, we're finally getting answers to everything that I have been waiting on here. But um. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett killed it, and Amari Cooper, he, you know, now, I guess, can can play on the road, so that's not super neat. Um, <laughs> Don Peoples-Jones, I, I bet against him, and I and I got burnt. He was trending toward uh, positive touchdown regression. I thought that the Buffalo Bills would be a really hard time for him to, to get right, but he was able to do it. Five of six for 61 and a touchdown. I think he scored that one awfully late, and he did a poor job of earning targets. But, uh, he, you know, he, he succeeded in the box score. So, hey, good for you. Harrison Bryant maintained a role here, but I think that that was because David Njoku, oh, excuse me, Um, I think it was because David Njoku, he's, you know, it's just his first game back from the high ankle sprain. I think that after this, Njoku should be, like, looking pretty good. I, oh, that's right. There's no, uh, we don't have a large enough sample size for, high uh, tight ends post high ankle sprain so we'll uh, you know i'll touch base with adam and see if he's gonna if he's got stuff to update here uh but that'd be really cool if we got more actionable information from that injury with that position uh rookie david bell four of five for 22 uh decent job earning targets not terribly efficient um Oh, Nick Chubb, he got a little more passing down work than I expected him to, and he's actually been a more efficient um, receiver than Kareem Hunt has. So monitor that. I'm wondering if Kareem Hunt is actually just cooked. Could be really interesting with the uh, upcoming quarterback change. But Nick Chubb, you know, top 15 running back at worst. On the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen was uh, slowed by his injury in this one, and he did not have – sorry, guys, I'm, like, overcome by yawns now. Um, Josh Allen, he did not have a, a big-time voluminous workload, and I think that that Balt- or, uh, uh, Cleveland can do a good job of killing the game script. So maybe that was one to see coming, but Cleveland's uh, defense, defense has been really, really efficient on a per-reception basis uh, allowed. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know where to go with the, the process on that one. I, I don't. I, I think it was good. Um, Stephon Diggs, four of five, 48 yards, one touchdown, you know, did a normal thing. Um, Gabe Davis promising, uh, efficiency, but, uh, only got five, five of seven for 68 hoping for bigger things this week though, as, um, Buffalo gets to tee off on. Uh, the Detroit Lions. That's right. Yeah. So I, I think I think uh, it's uh, all systems go here. I think I think we can have a, a really fun outing. Um, 
Dawson Knox. Knox, he's like he's been okay. He's he's a difficult player to rely on because he's not an elite target earner, but he's he's a tight he's a, a capable tight end and a really good offense. He has seen a little bit of an uptick in in usage over the last two weeks. I think starting him as a tight end one streamer against Detroit is not a bad idea, but he's not an elite guy. Uh, as for the rest of the receivers, Isaiah McKenzie, he's getting this big time. Uh, like full-time workload, but he's just not really doing anything with it. So I think that they'll probably start trotting Khalil Shakir back out there. Uh, since, since the, what was it? Week seven. Yeah. Week seven by uh, McKenzie's kind of had that role to himself a little bit. And I, I, I think they're going to start asking more of, of Khalil Shakir given the results. Devin Singletary. Th- so this backfield, guess what? Devin Singletary is lead back. And then James Cook is just being a monster in the in the the backup role it's so aggravating i that was i was so high on james cook um anyway devin singletary uh 18 carries 86 yards one touchdown went two of two for 11 yards in the passing game james cook 11 carries 86 yards earned two targets uh did not secure either of them naheem Hines finished with negative yardage and did not catch his lone target devin singletary he's still kind of dominating um passing downs I, unfortunately, I cut uh, both J- James Cook and Sky Moore in a number of leagues this last week after finally, fin- like, it took me 10 weeks to finally do it, and I did it. And then Cook, t- to be fair, Cook had been pretty decent in the backup role the last couple of weeks, but week 10, we did see a, a tick toward Naheem Hines having a more featured role, and then that was scaled back this week. Um, we'll get to Sky Moore in a little bit. But I would absolutely be stashing James Cook. Just elite, um, elite primary bell cow backup potential in the event that Devin Singletary misses time. And like Naheem Hines, I, maybe they did just add him to be a, a returner for this year. And then next year, they'll get him more involved. I Like Singletary, I, I, I think I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure that his contract is up at the end of the season. So... I, you know, in Dynasty, I, I would for sure be buying James Cook. Uh, I'm pulling up the uh, Devin Singletary. Yeah, he's he's a free agent next year. So maybe the, the idea is that Joe uh, uh, James Cook turns into a Joe Mixon where he's he's the featured runner and then he gets targeted on early downs and then they've got a passing game guy to come in for the passing downs. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, go stash James Cook and, and stash Naeem Hines. But Cook is just like he he runs through contract through contact really impressively he keeps his base just level it's it's very fun to watch uh washington commanders 23 at houston texans 10 i think the only the hand there there are a handful of things to to comment on here logan thomas he had a good day we'll see it i or we i i want to keep seeing it to believe it but good for him terry mclaurin just start him every week he's 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 an he's elite on a um in the in the efficient the the advanced metrics department, he's he's very very good. I I know four four for forty five was not you know what we wanted, but I would keep starting him. Um, but 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 so the the running backs really disappointed here, and uh, that sucks. J D McKissick's not coming back for a few weeks. I think they're going to reevaluate him in a few weeks, is what I saw today. Antonio Gibson though is is getting passing down work. Um. It's you know it's it's not a prolific offense, so you're you're limited to some degree. But I I can't believe that they didn't succeed in this one. Uh, Curtis Samuel and Jahan Dotson are just kind of sidekicks. There's there's so many mouths to feed here that we just outside of um, I think Terry McLaurin and, and probably Gibson, we we need to just I mean really okay outside of Terry McLaurin we have to play the matchups and even then this week we saw it you know not always there. As for uh, Houston, Davis Mills, you know, mediocre passer. He uh, scored a rushing touchdown. Damian Pierce uh, got a little more passing down usage and was, you know, he he did an okay job earning earning looks. Um, Dorea Gunbowale got more passing game work, though, which is a bit of a problem. But Rex Burkhead is seemingly being phased out. Uh, this one stings. Chris Moore was a guy that I, I wrote up for PFF, and the process was there. He was he was 
he earned targets. If if you go down to the into the weeds of things, like yeah, that should be a hit. That should be a process hit. But he couldn't get it done in the box score, and that's really a huge friggin' bummer. Nico Collins, I you know I'm optimistic that Nico Collins is is separating from Brandon Cooks, but they're he's gonna have to keep putting together some some big time showings. I have a really hard time pointing Brandon Cooks is better than a wide receiver four. Uh, and even that is can be tricky at times. Philadelphia Eagles 17 at Indianapolis Colts. Jalen Hurts, top three quarterback for the rest of the year. Miles Sanders didn't get in the end zone. That's a big bummer because sometimes his his um his weekly access to a ceiling is, is kind of intrinsically tied to that, but still an efficient rusher. Decent, decently efficient rusher, I guess. Um Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell is the Gainwell's the primary passing down guy. Boston Scott would probably step into a role, uh, featured role, early down role if if uh, Miles Sanders were to miss time. But it like neither of these guys can be started um, on a weekly basis. Quez Watkins, you know, hey, good for you, man. He, uh, he took advantage of the Kenny Moore matchup. Kenny Moore, Indianapolis Colts slot cornerback. He's been pretty up and down. And uh, if you're in a a, um, a tiebreaker situation, I don't think that it's a it's bad process to use a potential matchup with Kenny Moore to start him. Now, I don't know that Quez Watkins was really in that many uh, starter sit uh, tiebreakers, but yeah, food for thought. A.J. Brown, efficient, as always, didn't quite get the job done here. Devontae Smith, same thing. Um, Jack Stoll is playing ahead of Grant Calcaterra, but I'm still a little bit more interested in Calcaterra than I am in Stoll. Um, I just, I would just monitor the, uh, the, the Philly tight end usage as we progress, but I, I like Calcaterra more, um, than I like Stoll. Indianapolis. So Matt Ryan, um, scoreless, but you know, my, I, I don't know, mild, mild, uh, mild yardage. Some Jonathan Taylor, uh, yeah, not efficient, but the workload is there. And I think we should continue to expect that with Jeff Saturday. The uh, Michael Pittman Jr. is just, he's a, he's a, a baller. He's a straight baller. It's real it's hard for him to score in this offense because the offense doesn't score a ton, but like, Man, if they if they get things figured out in this organization next year, he's probably going to deserve an even higher um, uh, ADP than he did entering the year. Paris Campbell, uh, unfortunately, he didn't really hit this week, and I thought that he had a chance to, given the matchup against Josiah Scott, five of six for sixty-seven. That's usable in PPR formats, but it was not the kind of explosive performance that I was hoping for. Alec Pierce, um, it's just crowded, but he can earn targets. Don't worry about the rest of the, the Colts players. New York Jets three at New England Patriots 10. Uh, Zach Wilson is atrocious. Garrett Wilson is limited by that, but you know, you can, you can look to him in good matchups and most weeks, I think most weeks he is trustworthy. I, it just, it didn't surprise me that Bill Belichick wanted to stop him uh, because he, he got the better of them last time and they didn't have, they don't have anything to offer outside of him. Now that said, Elijah Moore, uh, Robert Salah is making good on his uh, slot promise for Elijah Moore. And Moore is doing a really good job of earning targets. And so I would be buying him, but it's such an ugly situation. It's, it's, it is hard to trust more. Um, Denzel Mims, just ignore him. Um, Tyler Conklin, I, you know, Tyler Conklin has flashed to times, but he is not that good. And, um, I think I had him probably in my top 15 tight ends last week. Man, he's just not that good. Like in a different offense, I could see him really doing some fun stuff. It's, I, I don't want to tell you guys to, 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 to trust him though on a weekly basis. As far as the backfield goes, Michael Carter is the lead. Ty Johnson is just now a, a thing on passing downs again. James Robinson. I don't know why the hell they made this trade. It was stupid, uh, but they did. And so here we are. <laughs> Um, really, really matchup dependent here for my, for Michael Carter. I think it's very, very difficult to re- recommend a start of either Ty Johnson or James Robinson. As per the uh, uh, New England Patriots, Mac Jones, uh, 
just struggle festing. Damian Harris ran well, but Ramondre is, I mean, six of six for 56 in the passing game. I, they, they, you know, they didn't do a great job on the ground, but, uh, oh, Damian did eight, eight for 65 Ramondre 15 of, or for 26. Um, the Jets front is better than you think it is. I'm still ranking Ramondre as a running back one. Damian Harris probably deserves RB three, but this week we are playing with all 32 teams. There's no, there are no teams that are on by. So that's something to keep in mind in that regard. Johnny Smith may be getting a little bit more involved. If you need a tight end, you can put him on your bench. Don't put him in your lineup yet, though. Uh, Jacoby Myers, he just earns those targets. Tough, uh, tough offense. Hunter Henry negatively impacted by Johnny Smith. Tyquan Thornton, uh, you're he's just he's been a disappointment. I hope that he can turn it around because I do think that he's good. Los Angeles Rams 20 at New Orleans Saints 27. Matthew Stafford is concussed. I think that Bryce Perkins. Or John Walford will probably play this week, but Walford did suffer an injury so uh, two weeks ago, so we have to see where where they're at with that. Um, but man, I, you know Bryce Perkins, he was sacked three times. <laughs> it's bad. He did run though; he ran f- uh, five times for thirty nine yards. Super flex league, eh, maybe. I want to talk about the backfield first because this one is near and dear to my heart. Here, Kyron Williams. I was I was. Uh, I, I, I viewed him at PFF as a, uh, a DFS GPP tournament play. The process ultimately I think was right. If we look at what he did, what, like what his usage is, he is the guy on passing downs and he is the guy in scoring position. Unfortunately, they just didn't give the ball. They, they, they didn't give him the ball, um, a whole lot. They, I mean, they didn't run a whole lot of plays. Cam Akers led the backfield in total touches with 14, um, 14 carries for 61 yards. It's a, it's a friggin' bummer. Um, the, the usage is there. The deployment is there for Kyron Williams, but I, you know, probably, a um, um, just a bench stash for the time being. He is the guy that I want of this group though. Darrell Henderson was relegated. Woohoo. Uh, Cam Akers, you know, a plotter. I think it's tough to start him in PPR formats. As to the passing game, uh, so I was wrong. I thought that um, Ben Skowronek would would be, uh, you know, I don't even want to call it the 1A. I, I figured that Tyler Higby would be the, the number one target earner and he was he caught four of eight for 45 yards did a really good job of earning targets Allen robinson asserted himself as the uh number one wide receiver he got the touchdown and he, he's probably the guy to bet on from from here on out i had figured that skyronek's uh slot role may get a little bit of the cooper cup juice and all i mean by that is just that he'd be running similar routes and he hasn't been atrocious this year so maybe stafford was, would look to him i had skyronek ranked as like a mid to low wide receiver four. And I think I had Allen Robinson as a wide receiver five. Uh, so it, it was hardly a flag plant, but um, anyway, so I think Higby and Robinson are the two guys here. Uh, Van Jefferson, you know, not very efficient to do at well. If you want to chase it at well, don't. And let me be in your league because he's not the usage. Uh, he, he is, 150 pounds and he can run really fast, but he's, he's not a target earner. It's, it's gross. Um, saw people tweeting about how, anyway, I'm not going to get into the negative stuff, but yeah, I, I'm not going to trust you too out. Well, um, <clears throat> as far as the new Orleans saints goes, uh, Andy Dalton, he got back on the horse. He had a really good game here. Interestingly, Taysom Hill featured, uh, or factored in early in the game, <clears throat> And uh, they got him going as a ball carrier again. He rushed nine times for 52 yards. A uh, little bit of involvement in the passing game. You know, this is the kind of usage that that you can you can have him as a, a, a quarterback or as a tight end one. The backfield is in flux with Kamar as the lead. Uh, Mark Ingram, he's out with the MCL sprain. They brought in David Johnson, which I think was a really weird signing. Like, you know, if you have to go at a running back, then why didn't you go get Dino Benjamin? Uh, David Johnson, he carried the ball one time for negative four yards, and he caught an 11-yard pass on one target. Okay, I, I did. you shouldn't have David Johnson. Don't add David Johnson on your roster. He's he's not good anymore. Um, I, we'll, we'll see how this shakes out. I mean, the, the number two role here, 
it should be Taysom Hill. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Kamara, top top fifteen running back. It's it's just volatile. But Chris Olave, it was really good to see him here. I, you know, I've been ranking him for a wide receiver as a wide receiver one since like week two. Uh, he's a he's a beast. He's a beast. He's an elite target earner. He is so good on a per route basis. Uh, caught five of six for 102 and one touchdown. If you were able to buy low, good for you. Juwan Johnson, he's getting the job done here. And it's a little bit strange because I, I figured that he would be uh, infringed upon by Jarvis Landry, who caught three or four passes for 33 yards, one touchdown. Uh, if they keep things as is with it just being, you know, Dalton throwing Taysom as a gadget, Kamara somewhat in, you know, frustratingly involved, uh, not to not high, not, not a great enough extent. Um, maybe Jawan Johnson and Jarvis Landry can sort of be possession guys, but it's like, it's not a perfect situation there. Adam Troutman was even involved a little bit. Um, the Rams defense, it got good players, but there it's just been weird there. Uh, and then there's running back Adrian Prentice was on the field a little bit. It, I, yeah, I their their decision making early in the year with the running backs that they kept, like Dwayne Washington, was pretty good in the preseason, so it didn't make sense to me that they cut him. They had that guy uh, Adam Smith, who they it's just not a good um, rusher, and I think he might have had some drops, but like he was a pretty decent uh, uh, pass catching running back. I don't know why they didn't roll into the year with Alvin Kamara, Washington, and, and that dude Smith, uh, but they didn't. So here to, now they've got. Um, 47 year old David Johnson. All right. Uh, Detroit Lions 31 at New York Giants. Okay. So I ranked, I have ranked Jamal Williams ahead of Swift uh, a couple weeks in a row now. And I think I mentioned on the uh, one of my recent shows that I'd, I'd written him up as an award winner at PFF during the midseason awards. He's just, he, that dude is um, the NFL's premier scoring position running back he gets he's got the highest volume uh workload he's also he also just gets a ton of carries uh we would love it if he got more more passing game usage but uh this is this is fine and what it is is fine and and you know evan uh evan silva i'm rooting for you bud uh he's got that ticket uh 100 150 to 1 for jamal williams to lead the league in rushing touchdowns i think he's got a chance here rooting for you DeAndre Swift, he did get the job done. He he found the end zone. Um, and I, I, you know, th- they might increase his workload here, but I, I think that this split is understandable for the time being. What I do and don't love, because I love Justin Jackson, but it's tough for DeAndre Swift, is Justin Jackson is now getting on the field in passing down situations, and he's playing really well. Uh, so good for Justin Jackson. I love Justin Jackson. It's tough for Swift, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's like it's one of the it's a three man committee that however sparingly might actually have value on a weekly basis does it does it hurt their ceilings yes it does but um we'll evaluate every week Amonara St. Brown uh just a crazy efficient guy and we're we're back to a small buy low cycle Brock Wright may be separating from James Mitchell as a tight end one but they're they're kind of fluctuating there New York Giants Ah, uh, this is such a bummer. So Wandale Robinson was just a friggin' hoss. Nine of 13 for 100 receiving yards, but he tears his ACL. We talked on the show earlier this year about the, 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 um, Robinson, he probably had a grade two ACL tear. And that's what kept him out for so long. Um, we saw Odo Beckham Jr. suffer this injury last year where he had a grade two ACL sprain that he was playing, you know, after somewhat rehabbing and then he, he tore it in the Super Bowl. And uh, it's too bad. I think Wandale can come back. He's, you know, he's, he's young, healthy. Otherwise, uh, I think that he can come back and be a uh, difference maker. It's a bummer kind of time of the year for this to have happened, but uh, ten a 10 month turnaround is not at all unheard of at, at this point in the NFL. So uh, I'm optimistic that Wandale can be ready to rock. He was just earning targets like a MF or uh, Darius Slayton back to being the wide receiver one in New York and Daniel Jones. He, you know, he did his thing uh, both through the air and on the ground. Interesting stuff going on here in the, the wide receiver two and three role moving forward with a uh, former Buffalo bill 
and Brian Dable uh, understudy, Isaiah Hodgins, uh, uh, kind of a bigger wide receiver. He went three of three for 29. He's been on the team for two weeks now. They, they picked him up via waivers, I think. I don't think they traded for him. I think it was a waiver signing. Hodgins is interesting, and I kind of wonder if he can outplay Richie James, although Richie James did catch three of three for 48 and a touchdown. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Maybe they try to get Hodgins in to uh, take Kenny Galladay's place, and then James is the slot. We'll we'll see how it, how it pans out. But um, Hodgins I, is a guy that I added in Dynasty. It's cool that Dable went out and got a, a guy from his old squad, Lawrence Cager, you know, maybe he's the tight end one there now. There's some fluctuation. I don't think it's going to be a lucrative role, but is what it is. Uh, uh, Saquon Barkley went back to earning some targets, but uh, it's just, it's not the crazy dual threat usage that we were getting early on. So it's, I, I think um, this week, where do I have him ranked? As I recall, I think they have, oh yeah, they're playing Dallas. He did really well against Dallas, but uh, earlier in the year, they were more frequently deploying him as a a receiver. So, you know, a little tough to bank on. He's still going to be a running back one, but I'm not going to have him number one this week. Matt Breida, he's been a decent change of pace guy. Las Vegas Raiders at Denver Broncos. Carr had a solid week. I think uh, think he's, yeah, they're playing the Seahawks. I think this coming, they are. Yeah, they're playing the Seahawks this week. So I think he'll, you know, he's a quarterback too. Josh Jacobs, um, the dude is, he got a little bit of passing down uh, uh, workload back this week. And so maybe that saves him because he was trending away from the passing downs, but uh, still getting targets on early downs like Joe Mixon, but now he's he's working back towards some passing down stuff. So if that's the case, then, you know, at worst top 15, but potentially just a running back one. Start Devontae Adams every week. That's the end of that story. Uh, Foster Moreau, not great. I think you can start him this week against Seattle because they are far and away the worst tight end uh, defense in the NFL. Mac Hollins, Crazy volatile. On to Denver, Russell Wilson. Uh, let's ride off into the sunset. And I I figure this out. It's it's so bad here. And so the team, so they're going to be without uh, running back Chase Edmonds, high ankle sprain, and they cut Melvin Gordon. So and Mike Boone is not eligible to return until uh, week 13. So it's going to be the old man Latavius Murray show the ever efficient Murray carried the ball 17 times for 49 yards and one touchdown catching four of four targets for 23 yards Uh, like beyond ugly here Marlon Mack and Jaquan Hardy maybe Divino Zigbo or Damarea Crocno he's on injured reserve it's going to be so friggin ugly in this backfield next week uh, but one like yeah, we'll we'll rank Latavius Murray in a uh, startable area though, because that's the way that the running back position goes. Volume is king. Cortland Sutton, you know, decent day, but it's just like it's impossible to friggin' trust this guy completely. Uh, Greg Dulcich, disappointing, but still earned five targets. Uh, Kendall Hinton, good good efficiency, not a great target earner. Dallas Cowboys at Minnesota Vikings. And I failed to write down the score on this one. So I'm going to, I'm going to run over there real quick and uh, yo, right, right, right. It's uh 40 to three uh, Dallas, Dallas, 40 Minnesota Vikings, three Dak Prescott efficient CD lamb, disappointing Dalton Schultz, disappointing Noah Brown, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott just, friggin dominated here and it's it's been really fun to see tony pollard uh killing it um you know as as ezekiel elliott gets healthier he will be a problem but he's dealing with a a grade two mcl sprain which may be what kyle pitts has the fact that they on kyle pitts the fact that they're actually having to debate whether to do surgery tells me that there's the mcl is still somewhat intact but i don't know we you know we don't know anyway um Tony Pollard's a running back one this week and Ezekiel Elliott, probably running back two. Um, we'll monitor the news, monitor the practice reports. If Zeke is able to get full participation, then we probably have to friggin' 
pull Tony Pollard back down to the RB two ranks, but we'll see. They want to win, and if he if he continues to do what he's doing, they'll have a really hard time going back to the dumbassery that they had been engaging in. Malik Davis, I think he's earned himself a role in the NFL, and that's cool. Um, Jalen Tolbert, a little bit of a Jalen Tolbert signing. I don't think it's anything, but he popped up. Uh, Jake Ferguson is efficient, but behind Dalton Schultz. So he is a dynasty uh, stash. Nothing really to say here uh, on on the the, uh, Minnesota Vikings. TJ Hawkinson, you just start him every week, as you do with Justin Jefferson. But like the rest of the passing game is is really tough to trust. Um, Start Dalvin Cook. Cincinnati Bengals 37 uh, at Pittsburgh Steelers 30. Well, all right. There's some interesting stuff to talk about with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but um, Joe Burrow, he just burned them down. Super cool. I should have ranked him higher. T Higgins had a really solid outing, did not score, but uh, he he is absolutely a wide receiver one for the duration of Chase's absence. Chase, though, is going to practice this week, and he could return. This would still be in line with a potential um, normal return to play, I do believe. Um, We had seen a a few different expected return scenarios, but there was a chance that it was just going to be a three- to four-week absence, and he's been out one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's been four weeks since he played, so – he could he could practice this week. He or excuse me, he will practice. He could play. We'll see if he is active. Um, then I think we probably just uh, fire him up. I'll, I'm checking the uh, the the yeah yeah. Uh, we don't have anything to worry about with with hips with uh, wide receivers coming off non-specific hip injuries. Uh, only a 1.8 percent dip in uh, average fantasy points in the first game back, and uh, a nine nine point seven percent dip over the the three first three games back but you know that's still wide receiver one so start jamar chase in the event that he plays tyler boyd you screwed it up man he had a chance and as did you hayden hurst uh trenton Irwin, i don't think is going to keep earning looks but he was a problem for the rest of the guys mike thomas i think mike thomas actually just got cut uh joe mixon suffered a concussion this is uh, especially noteworthy because the team is already down chris evans who was who had an ambiguous knee injury uh, that he suffered in week eight. So he is he has missed three games. And this actually, Samaji P. Ryan is a guy that I wrote up at the 33rd team. So you should go check out the per play data that I have there. The long and short is this. I think the week 12 backfield will be Samaj P. Ryan backed up by Travion Williams. P. Ryan, not efficient on the ground last week, but he's been pretty efficient over the course of his career, especially as of late. Uh, He's a very capable pass catcher, scored three touchdowns in the air um, just this week. His overall line was uh, seven carries, 20 yards, three of – no, that's Mixon. Uh, Samaji P. Ryan, 11 carries, 30 yards, four of four in the passing game for 52 yards and three touchdowns. He's not going to do that again, but I think that he can have a really good game because he is, I mean, it's, it's cool to see the guy is, he's a big guy. I think he's 5'11", 240, but he's a pretty solid pass catcher. So I think he'll be a full timer. Um, and uh, Travion Williams is a, a PPR play. Maybe not a high one, but he's, he's in playing in full PPR. Um Running backs tend to average, I think it's 1.8 games missed with concussions. Yeah, 1.8 games missed. So I, I think Joe Mixon is, is going to miss this week and, and potentially another one. Can he pick it? Moderate day. Thoroughly moderate day. But the takeaways are Pat Fryermuth, he's earning targets like a badass um, with Chase Claypool out of the house. So I I think probably Fryermuth's probably a top five tight end this week. Uh, George Pickens, I think, is maybe pulling ahead here of Deontay Johnson. Uh, I think Pickens is probably a weekly start wide receiver three. Deontay Johnson, just because he's a – we know he's good. I, I think you could start him as a wide receiver three, but it's rough. Um, Gunnar Olszewski has supplanted Steve, Steven Sims as the um, as the, the starting slot receiver. He's not very good. I mean, he to his credit, he was efficient. He wasn't very good last week. Um, but yeah, Gunnar Olszewski is the, um, is, is the, the starting slot receiver here. 
So if they have a great matchup against a bad slot corner, I, you know, hey, Millie Maker lineup, let's go. Um, Najee Harris, he balled out with Jalen Warren suffering what I believe was a hamstring strain. Um, that he, yeah, that was suffered in game, yeah, hamstring strain in game for uh Jalen Warren. So, Najee, bit of a compiler, but he's going to compile his way to a big time workload this week. So, start him. Um, Kansas City, I uh, I was working till uh, I was working late last night, so do I don't have any uh, um. Here are the takeaways. Patrick Mahomes, you start him every week along with uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. Sky Moore stepped the hell up. And so Kadarius Tony suffered a hamstring strain. Juju Smith-Schuster was out with a concussion. Michael Hardman was on injured reserve with the abdomen uh, issue. And MVS went back to being his normal and efficient self. I think that the, the tight ends, Fortson and Gray, are like DFS darlings. But, you know, that's something for another time. Um Tony is probably going to miss a few weeks with the hamstring strain. We'll see, but they, they wide receivers do tend to miss. I think it's like, I think it's 2.4, um, 2.6 games. Yeah. With hamstring strains. So Sky Moore, he stepped up, uh, five of six caught five of six for, uh, 65. I think it's, it was very, very, very good efficiency. Uh, Juju will probably be back this week, but like their second round pick just, responded to the call they're going to give sky more another chance so just like james cook i will be picking that guy up after dropping him for the first time all over the dang place after 10 weeks um he sky more is a must add los angeles chargers josh palmer had himself a great day keenan allen was was a lot of fun to watch uh trey mckitty did not i don't think he did anything with gerald everett out of the picture yeah, he did not. So um, on Everett, tight ends tend to miss 1.9 games with groin strains. A little bit labored when they returned, but not bad. Uh, I, I he, he was so close. He was so close to playing that, you know, maybe he has a chance this week, although it does kind of seem like he suffered a setback late in the week. We'll see. Uh, I expect Mike Williams to miss some time after re-aggravating the high ankle sprain. Keenan Allen. I, I think I've got him ranked as the wide receiver 12 this week. Josh Palmer, probably wide receiver two or three. Um, DeAndre Carter is, you know, deep league only kind of guy. Keep starting Austin Eckler and uh, Isaiah Spiller right now is the number one backup. All right, that'll do it, everybody. Uh, hit me up on Twitter at Nick Bodivord, NFL spelled N-I-C-B-O-D-I-F-O-R-D. Hit us all up at NerdballFF and uh, give us your thoughts, give us your feedback, send us your questions. Appreciate you all listening. Peace.